five, four, three, two, one. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and along with me are my bros of cinema, and I forgot the tagline. Are you, reading, are you reading through a script or something? <laughs> Yes, I have a. I wrote a script. You don't see it. It's right in front of me. It's like right here. So I'm trying to read a script. I fucked up. Okay. You've been doing so, like three or four four years. You should have had it by heart by now. Shut up. I do this bi-weekly, and I often forget how to host a damn thing. It's been two weeks. Shut up. If I wait any longer to edit another episode from pages to pictures, I will forget how to do that too. Uh, I might also forget how to animation look back. I might get my facts wrong. Oh no, Glenn Keen animated genie, what have I done? You might have verbiage animation look back now. To animate look back is verb. Yep. <laughs> I can't do because pickles. There can be only one. There he I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Go ahead. Make my day. Cinema Royale. Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale, where we keep it classy. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape, and this is my brothers of cinema. The Brotherhood of Cinema right here. First up, we've got Matt Bruneo's nose Animat. First off. I just need to say that we need to do something about the environment. We need to stop putting in condos Ooh. into the Arctic. <laughs> climate Ooh. change is real. We cannot live there when there is climate change, or else we will see twerking bears. And James Sullivan, also known as Hi, my dude. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Chocolate Benedict Cumber Bunnies, just in time for Easter. Oh my god, I saw those on Twitter. That, no, on Facebook, actually. What the fridge are those? Seriously, yes. it's like... <laughs> it's a Chocolate Benedict Cumber Batch with bunny ears. Why? Isn't that what you want for Easter? <laughs> Uh, yeah, because nothing says Easter. Like, hey, no, nothing says like the death of already. Nothing says like the death of Jesus with a, a a bunny that poops eggs that comes out as chocolate. Now we need to put Benedict Cumberbatch's face on it. I mean, with the fridge, like it's enough that we have to swallow an Australian Hugh Jackman Easter bunny who throws a boomerang around. <laughs> We don't need to throw Benedict Cumberbatch into the mix. But see, uh, see, you you made a clerical error there. It does not poop out chocolate eggs. It poops out jelly beans. Yes, by the Russell Brand rabbit. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Despicable Me, guys. It smells like Keebler in here. <laughs> Anyways, this... This is our third annual Oscars reaction review episode. Um, yes, we're going to go over and talk about the Oscars this year for 2016. And uh, yeah, let's get through the basics here. We've got Chris Rock hosting this year. And uh, oh boy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. boy. This Oscars this year was just... For me, it was overwhelming. It just it was lackluster to say at least for me. So, I, I think I actually uh, have been more interested. The ass huh? I'm uh, sorry. Go ahead. I go saw ahead. we. I was gonna uh, say go on. I, I think. So what would you guys? <laughs> well, you tell me to go on, and then you cut me off. <laughs> See, either one or the other, Mike. Choose. I'm choosing. Let me explain. What was your experience watching the Oscars? Well, to 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 put that in perspective, 
I should have I, I need to start before the Oscars. You see, the day that we that I was watching the Oscars, um I was actually I was actually uh, hanging out with my sister and her two daughters over at her house in uh, in Menlo Park, and we um, uh, it uh, we decided eventually to stay for dinner, and I realized okay even though I'm over here and with family, it's Oscars tonight, and I promised I was going to watch it just for this podcast, so I'm going to I'm going to watch by hook or crook. Uh, but we, but they don't have television, so we spent about a half an hour trying to enter Dad's Xfinity credentials into my computer just so we could watch the live stream that they have for the Oscars on the ABC website. Nice. Um, and uh, it, uh, we finally got in. We we started watching the red carpet show. So we were there early. And then 5.30 rolls around my end when the actual Oscars are supposed to start. And the connection, the broadcast signal cuts out. And I try everything to be able to, to get back in for the next 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. I don't know how long it took, but basically it seemed like so many people were logged in. It was uh, it was hard to get on, and I was trying different devices. I was desperate. I tried my phone. I tried my phone to watch this. That didn't work. I tried uh, I tried borrowing my sister's laptop to see if it was only uh, if the issue that I was having was only through my la- my laptop. And then, all of a sudden, I I just compulsively, right where we're sitting at the dinner table, I compulsively turn around in my seat, hit refresh <laughs> on the ABC page, and poof, voila, the signal's coming in. And the first thing I'm treated to is Sarah Silverman cracking jokes about her boobs in front of my two nieces. Was it about her boobs? Or her sex oh. life, or it was something... No, uh, it, no was... it was pretty much like, she was talking, I remember she was talking about James Bond, and like, how much, like, she was pretty much dra- dra- dragging on about how much of a sexist prick he is, like, kind of kind of like she had sex with James Bond, but like, she never, like, he never returned her calls or stuff. And he, then she followed that up with, no wonder half the women he he sleeps with to try to kill him which was the only funny joke that she had to say yeah pretty much i mean what what is i have to say what is with the oscars audience are they the easiest crowd to please here (laughs) i'm sorry but it's called the laugh track they they don't do that then they don't do that at the oscars actually no that is true because they would have used it a lot for chris rock Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chris Rock, another excellent example of oh, yeah. how easy the the audience is there. Yeah. <sighs> can I can I fill in for Chris Rock on this one? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. Because I got here's my spiel to say, but go on. Okay. Well, <laughs> your little spiel on Sutter Silverman. <laughs> That's just a little part of it. No, I will say that when it comes to Chris Rock, I was so excited for this Oscars. Because lately, uh, the, the previous hosts, they were not that great. Um, you know, honestly, there was... Ellen DeGeneres pretty much sucked. Neil no. Patrick. Yeah, I no. Didn't, I, it was boring. It was boring. No. This felt, like a re- this felt like a retread of that Ellen Oscars, too. Especially when he... Something he does later on in the Oscars. Yeah, and then there was also... Like the Neil Patrick Harris one, it was a bit better. It was an improvement, but yeah. eh, it was not that great. Like honestly, but then like Chris Rock, I was excited for it. I am a huge fan of Chris Rock's stand up, and especially add into the controversy of the, of the the whole diversity thing at the Oscars. 
I thought this would give Chris enough material to work with in order to give out a great show. Mm -hmm. That is not what happened, unfortunately. Because you could definitely tell that the Oscars neutered Chris Rock so down to the point that like now they're just treating the diversity thing as a joke. And that's kind of the biggest thing is that they're like they they, they try to really take the the whole controversy of like oh there's not enough bl- like there's not enough black actors and actresses being nominated at the Oscars and stuff like that and they really dragged it on to make this into a dumb joke. And the most pointless like the most pointless moment of them all was the time like when they did that the black like the black history moment and they were talking about like uh, like and somehow the punchline ended up being Jack Black. And the only thing that I remember actually was that a lot of people a lot of people actually tweeted at me because like they felt so confused and weirded out because they said, "Oh, like like this is a man who was like he spreads joy to everyone with magical films like Shark Tale." Mhm. But yeah, basically that whole point. Like I was watching that whole Jack Black bit, and I and I was just sitting there thinking, it's like, what the fridge was that about? That well, was really pointless. No, 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 no. The movies that they, uh, some of the movies that they listed off there, were when well, like you said, Shark Tale. Um, we're supposed to not think of Jack Black. We're supposed to think of Will Smith. Think of Will Smith. Who was yeah, whose like, wife was the one who called out? Uh, yeah, who did called think out, of Smith who, who, uh, I know, who, but I know, but still, it's like it's a dumb joke. It's like you you just look at it. It's like really, it's like are you just taking a jab at Will Smith just because Will Smith? Like I don't get it. Uh, more like. More like a jab at his wife, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, oh yeah, and then there was also the, the moment, like, another weird moment was when Chris Rock went and interviewed with the pe- like the people, like, he went to a, I think he went into a theater in New York, which is, like, kind of an all-black theater, and, like, he would interview the people that would go in and talk about the Oscars and stuff like that, and just show, kind of show their intelli- their cinematic intelligence in terms of what's going on with the movies and the Oscars and the whole diversity controversy. Mm-hmm. Like, the jokey bits were honestly really stupid. But I'll, I will give it credit, like, at the end when they were being serious and, like, talking about what it mean, like what it, w- what it means to people having, like, a minority being nominated. Like, that is perfect. Like, when, when right. it's serious, like, even even during that whole bit, even when Chris Rock gets serious and talks about, like, uh, talks about like the serious moments of like what it means of like about the diversity controversy. They're on point. Like they got mm-hmm. it right. But it's just that um, with all that. But with all that said, it's just you know like they, th- that's that's what it feels like because it it, it, tr- it feels like the Oscars are just treating the diversity controversy as a joke. And keep in mind that's just with that element with Chris Rock. Like, there are there are so many other weird things that occurred. Like, the freaking Chi- the the Chinese kids, like the like when Chris brought in the Chinese kids and he forgot to bring in a joke, or like when he tried to do like the Girl Scout cookies thing for some uh, reason. Uh, so I yeah. didn't miss much when the connection cut out there. Mm-hmm. No, there wasn't much at the beginning. No, <sighs> there wasn't much at the beginning. Um. Actually, no. The beginning, no. The beginning was actually the best part. It started out with a montage of basically the best, like the best of the best of movies in 2015. That was great, and then everything just yeah, began. yeah. Uh, I, 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 I wish there was some website that hosted that just so I could see it because I, I did actually watch the Chris Rock routine. Uh, after the fact, you know, that was being posted around Facebook saying Chris Rock nails it about uh, about um, oh. all-white Oscars or whatever, hashtag. Oh. 
And uh, I looked at those things, and I was just there, like, "What the frig are you talking about?" And I'm, I'm, what I'm watching in his routine. He, Chris Rock is a guy who, I'm just gonna say, I'm not a huge fan, but he can be funny. However, um, there's there's two tendencies that I that I notice every time I I hear him do his stand up. One is he knows his audience. Two is sometimes when he opens his mouth to spout off opinions, he sounds like a complete and total idiot, and kind of a mean spirited one at that. But this Chris Rock seemed like okay, so maybe yeah, he did have some good points to make about uh, uh, the uh, the controversy, which let's be honest, nobody would care about it. Mm-hmm. If if yeah, it this had is, this is if it hadn't answer. been for Spike Lee, who never who never looks happy to be at the Oscars every time he's on the red carpet. You look at look back on on every year that they've done the red carpet montage when they cut over to Chris, when I, whenever they cut over to Spike Lee standing there he's always just like yeah and Jada Pinkett Smith <laughs> he was like too. Jack Nicholson at the end of that oh what was that movie three good men or something like yeah three yeah three good men like just there you people he's just looking at what am I doing here and so, so yeah. If it weren't for those guys, uh, uh, just uh, tossing that in there, uh, uh, we wouldn't be talking about this now. It wouldn't exactly. be such a big deal, and nobody nobody would care. We would all move on, and just say, okay, we'll watch Straight Outta Compton on our own time and see if that's worthy. Yeah, but, actually. I just need to mention, like, now when you're thinking about it, now that it is not that big of a deal, I'm thinking about, like, the huge impact that it had on, like, social media and all that kind of stuff and how people are reacting to it. And now I'm thinking, it's like, what rea- – like, which one got a bigger reaction and, like, it went into bigger controversy? Like, and I don't mean, like, what it means and stuff like that, but how people reacted. The, diver- the diversity controversy – or last year when the Lego movie did not get nominated for best animated feature. I can live with that. No, no, but, <laughs> no, what I'm asking is that which one did audiences explode with rage with the most? Ra- the the more recent one, I thought. Yeah, the diversity. The yeah, diversity maybe. issue. It's the I diversity. Mean, it's not the sure the Lego movie is a, the, the fan base, but it's just like the diversity thing was huge like Oscar so white, it was like all over the fucking place. Even I even hear it, you know, people at my school talking about it, just like Oscar so white. I'm like, okay, yeah, maybe you have a point. That might be a stupid question to me, a stupid question of mine to ask. It was, but like, it was all but over actually, Facebook. No, but like, actually, I didn't see a thing about, about the Lego Movie when that when that happened. No, but actually, when you do think about it, maybe it's not that big of it's not that dumb of a question actually, mm-hmm. because these both are. Like controversial moment, like controversial moments that made people mad. So, like, when you do think about it, when the Oscars are in trouble or when they do something wrong that the audiences don't impro- don't approve, like you you see how they explode. Mm-hmm. Right. It's mm-hmm. another example. Yeah, I, th- I think Chris Rock for the tiniest thing, like nominated for be- like what's nominated for best animated feature. Hmm. Yeah, I yeah. think Chris Rock actually had a very, a very good, good point uh, when he was talking about. Oh yeah, back in the, uh, it's a good thing we didn't have these problems back in the '50s when, when mm-hmm. there were lynchings happening and you know black people actually had things to complain about, which would have been completely racist if that was a com- if that was a white comedian saying that. Right. But yeah, um, that's that's the thing with Chris Rock. He only does thing like. His material is mostly through things that no white man can ever say without getting punched in the face. But um, I was actually talking with... uh, I've actually heard a a few different opinions on this. Uh, LT was actually talking to me. Uh, He said... 
he said if there's anything to be concerned about um, uh, he he feels like um, a the he, he's not gonna go he didn't go to the whole extreme of uh, of, uh, of of joining in with this movement to boycott the Oscars just because no black actors got nominated uh, he wasn't um, but he did he did make sort of a point he said uh, why why is it when when black actors get nominated usually they have to be uh, usually they have to be a, a thug or a, a drug dealer or, or a bad guy or something like that usually it's something that's dramatically categorized or maybe or maybe um, the race card in in some form or another has has to be played and I just sort of think well yeah I guess they are trying something different this year but um, uh, the someone else brought up an interesting point saying um, if uh, and this was uh, someone who was on NPR who was an african-american activist they said if you if you want um, if you want uh, black actors and actresses to get nominated you have to write those roles you have to cat you have to cat make a, a case to to cast african-americans in those roles and not um, and and not something else that's that's the difference right there um, Chris okay. Rock uh, going on a, a routine about it bringing it back to him I have to agree with you Matt though 100% he felt like he was he sounded like he was holding back here like uh, he seemed like okay like I said before he, he knows his audience so he's just up there going and there's this look in his face like he's he's somewhat panicked saying know your audience know your audience well that that all oh, white Oscars thing man oh that, and that, you that, you that, can that. actually see the look on his face the amount of nervousness that he has every time like he would make a joke that like there's no laugh to. Like, you can feel the nervousness. It's like, oh, crap, that didn't work. All right, let's move on to the next one. No laugh, but I better say something next that white people are going to agree with. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he just wasn't... I mean, it was okay at most, but not the greatest when it comes to hosting. I mean, it was yeah. just that he, he did his part and just segued into the presenters and the wars were given and blah 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 like so it's something i would do you know i would host it you know move it along move it along move it along kind of thing um i, I do have something kind of preluding be way before the oscars that even happened this uh whole uh in january everybody was like people are like hmm, who's gonna win the oscar is leo gonna get his oscar is leo's gonna get his oscar and uh, the, it was a funny joke. I, and, uh, I'm in college now, so uh, during class, we were teachers talking about um, the uh, the greatest threat to our life was, you know, stuff like cars and stupid people and, you know, accidents. Oh, actual cars. So, I thought you meant the movie. <laughs> no, that would be Cars 2. <laughs> yes, Cars 2 poses the greatest threat to my life. No, uh, so, so he had, he wanted to ask us to you know list off some other threats to our life, and this one kid in the back says, "The thing that probably poses the greatest threat to my life is bears." Bears. <laughs> and we all start laughing in class, like, "Oh my god, bears!" He must have saw the Reverend, and so. We were all laughing. It's, it was a quote of the day on my Facebook. I was like, that was the best thing I ever heard all day. Yeah. And then uh, another class I had, we had to write uh, 
six word stories. So you just think of six words to make a story, more or less. So one of my I had to write a couple of them. One one of mine was Bear Attacked, Leo doesn't get the Oscar. Uh, and and the and the teacher read it and she's like, Yep, that's the best one. And she presented it to the class and everybody laughed at it too. I was like, Okay. Wow. wow. It was. So I was like, Okay, he better win the Oscar because we've been joking around with the bear attack. And I did actually sort of seen the revenant. I saw I, I somebody bootlegged a uh, clip of it. I saw the bear attack. It was pretty uh Pretty intense, but eh. So, yeah. so I knew. The only thing. Oh, go on. With the Oscars here, I just I was just hoping that Leo would maybe get his Oscar after all yeah. the ridicule from all the memes and the bears and the old Mayish. Yeah, pretty much. Like the only the only thing that the only thing that I could add is just is just that, like that story. It just reminds me of like. There was this moment in the season finale of the of the new Muppet series. There was at one point Bobo came in because like they brought in so many people to enter the studio, and he was just there. Permission to mold the next person who who asks if I'm the bear from the Revenant. <laughs> yes, I, I remember that. <laughs> that yes. was great. That was great. I remember it was like yes. <laughs> oh man, that was great. So yeah, so. I was like, okay, we have to see what happens with the Oscars this year. Hopefully he gets the Oscar. But um, the ceremony was great. So let's just get right into the categories itself. Um, Actually, there is – can I add something? There, There is – sorry, Mike, but it's just that there is, there is one good thing that I will say, like during the whole thing, that I really do want to mention. There is one really cool aspect – is actually how they presented the animated categories. Like, it started out pretty cute. They brought in the minions to present best animated short. Like, oh, yeah. it was it was like this dumb little slapstick thing. It was cute. Yeah. It was better than what Chris Rock was doing. Mm-hmm. But I will say it was definitely awesome that they they had, like, Woody and Buzz Lightyear present for best animated feature in honor of yep. the 20th anniversary. That was yep. actually really cool. That was. That was. Bye. Uh, yeah, I, st- I still remember, I-, I still remember the amazement uh, 20 years ago of uh, of watching John Lasseter go up there, and uh, what was that a a special achievement? Yeah, it was a special award. And uh, and just you know he left he left Woody and Buzz up there, and then they get up and they start they start like I can't believe he left us up here. It, it it took everyone completely by surprise, but the the sad thing is now that that sort of thing is expected actually, um, and that's it's um it it's sort of a retread idea, and. Um, it's, it's really the sort of thing that you see, uh, I believe I, I pretty much saw that coming, but, um, it, when that's, when a retread idea is better than the main show, you're in trouble. Mm. And I remember we were just leaving the house when, when that moment came on and, uh, we were saying goodbye and everything, and I was carrying my laptop, watching the Oscars at the door. Goodbye, everybody, and whatnot. And I actually stayed. I stayed right outside the house and waited until the animation category uh, best winner was announced, mm-hmm. just before I left. And. Uh, yeah, the signal was the signal faded out for a second. I was like, "Come on, come on, come on!" And then it, just as soon as I just as soon as it came back in, I hear Buzz say, "Toy Story." I no, it it da, da, da. no, it was the announcer. Um, say da, 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 da. I got my I got my story mixed up here. I got my story mixed up. I just I it came right back in for him to read out inside out from the. From the oh, right. envelope, right, and 
my sister who was watching out watching me out the window at that point just saw me go like yes <laughs> nice um yeah yeah so i i was watching it as i was doing dishes so it was kind of like i had to stop for a second to watch and see what happens with the awards so i went through them but one by one with them and i was like a, and i didn't have a ballot I didn't have a ballot. I was just there. I was looking at the categories. I was like looking at the nominees. I was like, okay, I'm going to bet that one's going to win. And I was like, I kept on going as the Oscars went on. So the first one that was presented was Best Original Screenplay, which was Spotlight that won yep. it. Spotlight. And nope. uh, that one was kind of obvious, yeah. It was, it was, because Spotlight is actually a really, really good film on journalism. Like, if you have not seen Spotlight, definitely check it out. Because I, I had to. I've seen it, you know, just uh, as for our previous episode of the podcast we did for 2015 Guide. Um, really good film. Uh, da, 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 da. Then Best Adaptive Screenplay, which was the uh, Big sh- Big Short. Short, yes, Big, the big Short. Short. And it was uh, Adam McKay. I was surprised that Adam McKay actually got like an award for something that wasn't a comedy. Or Will Fill related. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, da, da. Then, like James well, said, technically Sarah, it is Steve Carell related. Uh, yeah, but usually Adam McKay does a lot of Will Ferrell stuff, not Steve Carell stuff. But I digress. Uh, Sarah Silverman came on, presented the performance of <sighs> Writings on the Wall. Oh God, that okay. Put the writings a, on the wall. If we can all agree there is one moment that is worse than the Oscar show and Chris Rock and all that stuff, it is that performance of writings on the wall. I, yeah, it was just like, really? Really? Ugh. <laughs> the dude had a freaking... It, it sounded like the dude had a sock in his mouth, for God's sakes. That's how he sings. That's how he yeah. sings. I mean... That's... Um, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, just... the uh, what? Go on. Go on. Well, and that was that was another thing. Um, I find myself I find myself interestingly invested in uh, in these past couple of Oscars that have included Bond songs because up until Adele. Not a single Bond song had ever won the Oscars. Not even Goldberg. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Either, mm-hmm. if anything, maybe they were nominated. But, um, and I, I always find that fascinating as a Bond fan because it's a slice, it, it's an important slice of culture, uh, or of, US, of our culture, mm-hmm. U.S. culture. And it's, um, and every every song up until up and every every song that uh, that has been written for the Bond films up until maybe recently has been some sort of hit. So I, I've honestly never heard of Writings on the Wall until the Oscars, to be honest. And uh, so with um, with Adele to. To win, uh, to win the uh, Oscar for Skyfall, and let's be honest, she was. I've uh, I've listened to that song over and over. I like it, but mm-hmm. she really won it just by copying the same formula that uh, that everyone else had come before her had sung the same song. It, it still had the same strings and horn section, the same riff. Do, 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 is in the background. Yeah. And uh, Sam Smith comes in with writing on the wall. This is the second time in the row where a Bond song has has <laughs> won doing the classic formula. So what happened all those other years... Yeah, it's just, it's just it's a current uh, Oscar trend now, apparently, with don't the Bond ask, things. Don't ask the 90s, because Disney kind of dominated that. When you, yeah, when you're, uh, 
uh, you, you can you can say what you want to about about Sam Smith's performance, but what is it's like what is, what is what are they doing right now? Yeah, it's yeah, that was kind of weird when I noticed that. Uh, <sighs> let's see. Then then they had the presenters each segment for the best picture segments, uh, best supporting actress, which I didn't watch the Danish Girl, so I didn't know the best supporting actress. Well, um, wasn't Eddie Redmayne? No? No, oh, okay. Oh, I no. said actress, not actor. Yeah, Eddie Redmayne? Oh, because she... Ah. <laughs> there you go. Ooh, over my head. Over my head. Thank you for your obvious joke. Oh, my God. That was horrible. Um, but here, let's, let's, let's talk about this at least. Mad Max Fury Road gets six Academy Awards. It yeah. ends up being... It, it was like I was watching it, and every time I was like, okay, Mad Max Fury Road, and I was like, and the award goes to Mad Max Fury Road. I was like, yes, yes, and I was like pumping it. I was like, yes, yes. And I was like, Your favorite movie of 2015 was yes. was taking it home. I was like, oh, yeah. I kept that going. I was like, all right, Mad Max Fury Road. The war goes to Mad Max Fury Road. I was like, oh my god, two in a row, three in a row, four in a row, five in a row, six in a row. Holy crap, they're on fire. Yeah. And I'm just listing this off on Facebook like five, six. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just... honestly, you know, if I could be honest, I knew for a fact that Mad Max would be like kind of the big winner at the Oscars where it's going to win a lot of Oscars, but it's not going to win the big ones. I knew for a fact. Because it, it, it was going to be a lot like Gravity during that time where, like, it got a lot of awards, but it, uh, the best picture category went, I think, during that year it was 12 Years of Slave. I think that's what it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, so, and I'll be honest, while I was doing my ballad, uh, basically all the ones that, I, that, like, I picked Mad Max Fury Road, I did get it right, but it did get a lot more than I expected. I didn't expect that it would also win Best Costume Design and Best Film Editing. Um, yeah, there was no way it was going to get best best picture. I mean, no disrespect to the film, no disrespect no. to the fan. No, no, I can't, no, 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 no. I can't there have... was no. <laughs> no, but... because no, because this is the thing. It's like this major action film. When is it? Have you ever heard that uh, a major action-packed film wins best picture at the Oscars? I I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I'm sure if it, we dug through history, there could be that one instance, but um, yeah, this was not it. No, I was surprised. I was so excited when that got best film editing because uh, Margaret Sex Sexel Sexel is she was fantastic and she was George Miller's wife, so it was just like she got an award for editing the film. It was just like Margaret fuck Sexy. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Um, but what was it? I was surprised. I was looking at best makeup and hairstyles. I was like, "There's only three in the category." I was like, <laughs> yeah. No. Can I can I mention one of the categories? Okay. It's like okay, Mad Max. Oh, okay, Revenant. And then we got the hundred year old man who climbed out the window and disappeared. I was like, "What movie is that? Where 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 was that movie?" <laughs> I I that was the first time I'd ever heard of that. But gosh Me too. darn it, when I looked at. What? When I looked at the makeup job, I said, yeah, that is an impressive makeup job. But to be fair, often best makeup, they would always get some weirdo cat. They would always get the weirdo movies in there. Keep in mind, that's the category where Norbit was nominated for for an Oscar. Mm. Mm. Actually, that was kind of deserved. That, that, that was a good makeup job. Uh, it's, Rick ba it's Rick Baker. You can't complain. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Let's see, sound editing, sound mixing kind of figure because the sound editing and sound mixing sound, was really sound, good sound, on Mad yeah. Max. Um, usually they go together. Usually, yeah, like... it was it was really good actually, and I loved it when they did that too. For the when they were showing the nominees for the category, they were like sh displaying yep. the sound of it, so it was like doo 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 doo. doo. Yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. cool. That went uh, to Star Wars, right? No, no, oh, no. They Mad both Max. Went to Mad Max. Oh, oh yeah, there was another Mad Max win in there. Yeah, uh, of course. production. Production design was kind of figured because that was a really good production. Uh, best was... costume design. I was kind of surprised that Cinderella got a best uh, nominee for best costume design, which was really good. Well, uh, I mean, like, keep in mind, Cinderella is all about like one of the iconic things is like the blue, like the big blue dress and all that kind of stuff. And especially how in Cinderella they kind of went 
like in many different ways with the costumes uh, you know it, it kind of does deserve a nomination uh let's see let me try to go in through these let me give me a second here uh i also, the... I also oh. want to re- to bring us back to sam smith for a moment before i completely forget about this yeah go ahead um i hadn't heard all the i hadn't heard all the oscar songs before this so i didn't have a I didn't have a preference, really. Um, they only later, did three, however. That's they the did, thing. They did three, and mm-hmm. so I was listening to Lady Gaga's one for the first for the first mm-hmm. time as it was a live performance, and I just mm-hmm. said, "Okay, it's a it's a movie. It, it's a song she wrote for a movie that's a that's about rape victimhood." Yep. And yeah. they have a I didn't particularly jive on the on the song, but the performance they got people coming out with tattoos and whatnot. And I'm just like, okay, playing up the victim card, rape story. This is the one this is the one that's gonna win, right? <laughs> yeah. No no no, because honestly during that time, like, they played it so much. It's almost beat by beat. Like last year's glory, it was almost like that. Oh yeah, they, they oh, come back to the audience yeah. crying and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. The only difference is that it you only see um, Lady Gaga flipping out. She is so passionate during that song, like like you just hear. Hey, you remember yeah, me at the Oscars last year when I pretended to be uh, Julie Andrews? Oh, well, yeah. Here I am going crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, when, I the tra- st- when I tried to be... No, when she tried to be... No, it was, no she tried to be... Uh, oh, crap, Julie, Judy Garland, I believe? Julie Andrews. Andrews. Sound- She's music. Oh, sound, sound of music. music, right. Oh, yeah. And she had a trumpet in her arm. Yes, yeah, she had trumpets. We did it. We talked about that last year. Yeah, we, talk- we talked about that last year. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, it was kind of interesting because this year, Lady Gaga was doing something remarkable. This year, she performed at the Grammy, she performed at the Super Bowl, and now she performed at the Oscars. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of a big three for her. Yeah. Um, that trifecta. So trying to so... like break it, breaking every all the records. Uh, I was going to segue into possibly something that was kind of shocking, but kind of expected was uh best visual effects yes actually ex machina won did you guys it see, did you guys see ex machina i did i left a review okay, yeah. on facebook yeah uh, he yeah. did that's right yeah he did and he... yeah like i like i say it's uh it's amazing effects but my hmm. god the story was dumb i mean <laughs> Uh, that was not, wasn't that nominated also for best original screenplay? Uh, yes, it did uh, actually. Yeah, it was actually. Yeah, when your plot is uh, is written around, okay, so it has the advantage of focusing itself around a really small set of characters, a really small cast, and when you do that, you can you can have a lot of a lot of uh, individual character building and depth and whatnot. This is a a movie about a guy who's not just trying to fool, a, not just trying to make another guy believe that the robot is pretty much a human, mm-hmm. but also see if he wants to bang it. <laughs> there, there, was, there, there was at one point he legit said it. It's like, it's like, well, uh, I'm just wondering, did you have for it? Yeah. Yeah, I programmed it to have sensors uh, under, underneath her vagina. Yeah, uh, I did that. Yeah, that's... Which actually, I remember the... actually, it does remind me of something. I'm actually surprised that Oscar Isaac did not get nominated for Best Supporting Actor in that film. He was great. That, that He's hands down one of the strongest points in the movie, actually. I now, I now know, actually, what they were referring to in... Uh... In that one uh, Andy Kaufman movie that Morgan and I reviewed about the Pleasure Center. 
Oh, My pleasure yeah. center is tingling. <laughs> well, you have to make it tingle. <laughs> yeah. No, but yeah. I will say that uh, for best visual effects, I was definitely like I felt a bit mixed. Like, you know, when thinking about it, yeah, I could definitely see how it deserved to get the uh, best visual effects award because what they did with the with the uh, uh, the AI robot, it was definitely incredible. Like it, it, it like absolutely, it, it seemed so realistic. But at the same time, I was a bit disappointed that Star Wars didn't end up winning it because I thought that would be the category that would be such a shoe in in order to get. Plus the fact that like not like not only is it all C not only is it like just partly CG, but also they got like they ha they had many practical effects as well. So. I was mm -hmm. honestly shocked. I, I was honestly shocked, and it, it left me a bit disappointed over the fact that Star Wars: The Force Awakens didn't get away with an Oscar because honestly, it could have gotten one. Like yeah, it I mean they they had they they really had people mystified with BB-8. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that was well, a legit real thing. Yeah, we we yeah. all thought watching the trailers though trailers for that wow that's got that's got to be a uh, cgi because it's got no joints on the ball there how, how does this work and then they just sort of showed up with it at... yeah it was during a press conference it's like like yeah we imagineers check out what we got see that that's a real thing mm -hmm. it was it was actually really cool seeing bb rtd2 and cp throw at the oscars too it was, that bit? It was pointless I thought they were about to present like a category or something like no, that. No, they were just like, mm, I don't know where to sit. Where should we? Where should we go? Oh, there's yeah, John Williams. Like, yeah, there's John like, Williams. Like, okay. He's got his 50th uh, nomination. It's just like, hey, look, there's... we're up here again at the Oscars. Remember asteroids? Every time we come to the Oscars, it's funny, right? Uh, it's like, it's like, let's okay. make a CPO looks like an Oscar joke. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and people are people. I've seen so many people comment over the um, the continuity error, considering that C three PO's arm is not red. Oh, <laughs> do 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 you people have anything, any any real issues to complain about? Oh my gosh, it's the Oscars. There's no such thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, what have we been doing for the past hour? Never mind. But, uh, let's see, best cinematography went to The Revenant, which was yeah. expected because... That was expected. He, he was, uh, that was really good cinematography. Like, if you want to go watch The Revenant, because it has spectacular cinematography. Yeah, speaking but, of which, there's no, there's no light, there's no actual lighting or stuff like that. They only use the sun. Uh, it was kind of the same thing with Sicario, actually, with Roger Deakins, which he had tons of nominations for, uh, cinematography. But, if you watch Sicario, there's a couple of, like, night shots, and it's, like, lit so nice like it's it was a surprise how they got lighting in a dark setting like that uh i was actually surprised that Max Fury didn't get cinematography because they actually brought him back out of retirement in order to do the cinematography for the film so it was just like come on just give me that one fucking oscar for him because he came out of retirement to just do that fucking film nah, uh, the, all the others were going for uh Everyone else, like all the other awards, were going for uh, the Revenants for best cinematography. So, yeah. So, uh, best original score was actually uh, for the Hateful Eight. Yep. Yes. So. It, it it that was actually kind of uh, kind of amazing. I remember Mike and I were 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 talking about it briefly, and actually, um, a not only did I think it. It deserved it because that was a good score. B, thank goodness for a recycled score from John Carpenter's The Thing. Mm -hmm. And C, they there was a big to do about about uh, Ennio Mor Morricone finally winning an Oscar. Uh huh. That wasn't, but but the problem with that is he did a life. He got a Lifetime Achievement Award before. Oh yeah. So, it, is that uh, is that more than or equal equal to uh, 
equal to uh, uh, an actual uh, win for a category? Uh, 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 I would say uh, it's a higher honor, honestly. I because think lifetime it's, it's, it's a, yeah. Yeah, lifetime achievement award pretty much reflects your entire career, and probably like it would include future as well. Exactly, That's sort of my point. I'm, I'm a good, good on him for finally getting, getting up, getting this off of his bucket list. Mm. No, but like even no, but even at that, like even after you, we get a lifetime achievement award. That doesn't mean you don't deserve to get any Oscars afterwards. Yeah, if you I'm, did a great job on something, you should be awarded. I am not saying he shouldn't have. He did a good exactly. job. Okay. Uh. So, were you guys rooting for Sly Stallone to get the sporting actor? Yeah, I would. No, but, yeah, I would. But I talked to, uh, like, honestly, the reason is, and I think the reason is because, like, everybody was going with uh, Sylvester Stallone for Creed because they have not seen Bridge of Spies. I actually talked to my aunt today about, uh, like, we talked about some award stuff, and she mentioned that she saw Bridge of Spies. And, like, once you see that guy... It's like you know for a fact like he's gonna get it. Okay. A, I was like I haven't seen Bridge of Spies, so I was just like I I, I bet he's he was a great sporting actor in that film as well. Um No, but like even then, in that small clip that the Oscars showed, like you could definitely tell how he got it. Uh huh. I'm I wasn't surprised by that. Uh Best Supporting Actress. Nope, nope, did that already. Fuck it. Uh Best Actress was Brie Larson for a room. Which yeah. I have not seen. Um, uh, again, da -da -da. that's another one that is expected since all the other, uh, all, all the other shows they they do the same. They always give it to Brie Larson. Well, this is probably the first time actually, because usually it's Jennifer Lawrence. Well, really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she didn't okay. get the Oscar. Um, trying to see what else. No, but I mean like this. No, but I mean like this year, the other award shows they gave it to Brie Larson. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Golden Globes and all that crap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Should we do a Silver Royale and Golden Globes, people? No. Comment below. No, no. thank you. <laughs> I've already tried. Uh, I already tried <laughs> watching the Golden Globes once. They had. Uh, they had Keanu Reeves hosting, and uh, really? <laughs> one category, but it, one category, but it, it, for the, he he can be a fine actor on screen, but my goodness, the air escaping his lips during that. Uh, was he presenting something? That yeah, or... he was presenting something. <laughs> I think I, I think I know what you're talking about then. Yeah. You know, There's... I actually no the one Golden Globes moment that I remember. It was so random and so it's like it was so stupid. It was when Sasha Baron Cohen. You can easily notice he was drunk as hell. All he did, he was slamming everybody, the like all the cast of um, of Les Misérables. Like Russell Crowe needs singing. Helena Bonham Carter there was there because she banged someone and all that kind of stuff. And then out of the blue. And now here are the nominations for Best Animated Feature. What? <laughs> really? Uh, it's a lit up to what? <laughs> let's see. Uh, best Documentary and Search Subject Documentary. Dude. I mean, I Amy won. Those. I mean, Amy won for Best Documentary because people love Amy Winehouse. I mean, uh, well, Best no. Foreign Language Film is typical. Best Nobody documentary was, Best Documentary Short was A Girl in the River, The Price of Forgiveness, but who the fridge saw that? Yeah, and some of these, you kind of don't, unless you prepare yourself ahead of time, especially with the foreign language film from Hungary. Son of Soul won that one. Son of Soul, um, Best yeah. Live Action Short Film. Uh, but yes, Matt, you can yes, actually... Stutterer. Yeah, why don't you talk about the the two uh, animated yes. categories? Okay. Um, well, I guess we'll start off with Best Animated Short. And I have actually seen all of them, by the way. Okay. And honestly, okay, I'm gonna, going to be very honest. I was kind of late when it comes to um, checking up on all the stuff because I actually caught up with every single one after, like the day after the Oscars and stuff like that. But 
Um, honestly, I was expecting the world of tomorrow because I saw online that everybody's hype, like was hyping up about it and considering that it was Don Hirschfeld and seeing it. Yeah, I kind of get it. It's like, it's very, it's a metaf it's a very metaphorical film. Like it talks about like, um, you, you know, it's about this girl, you know, a girl showing her younger self, like the future and stuff like that and what life, sh what life she'll get and stuff. You know, it's interesting. You can clearly tell that there is like a deep message that is trying to be said. And also it is weird. And there are some things that you don't understand. I mean, there's one scene where the girl falls in love with a rock. Um, but I was expecting that because like, it is like one of the very artsy kind of things. But for me, I had two personal ones. I wanted I wanted to see either Sanjay Super Team to win because honestly that that is one of the best um, Pixar shorts that I've seen in that Pixar has done. It's like really incredible, or that or Prologue, considering that it was made by Richard Williams. And I have to say, out of all of them, Prologue is the best animated. Although I do understand why it didn't win, considering that it didn't like it does it didn't really have much of a story. Again, it is a Prologue to a future project that Richard Williams wants to do and turn it into a movie. But I will say, oh my god, it is the most brutal. Like, it's, it's, a, it's literally a four-way gladiator fight. And the last hit is a stab in the frickin' grundle. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, it's literally that bad. But um, there is also We Can't Live Without the Cosmos. I didn't think much of it. That'll put the thief in your cobbler. <laughs> oh, eesh. but yeah, uh, the fact that Bear Story actually won, it also makes it like the first time ever that Chile won an Oscar and also that Latin America won for Best Animated Short. This Great has a bit of diversity. <laughs> it has. Yeah, <laughs> this pretty much has a bit of everything. It has a story. It ha like it has a story. It tells like. Um, you know, about a bear who got kidnapped and he has to join the circus and he's trying to escape in order to go back to his family. There is a, you know, there's a message regarding cruelty of animals in the circus. There is heart, uh, there's a lot of heart considering that it is a bear with a family. Um, and also the animation is actually pretty good. It's not the best that I've seen, but like when, it, when we would enter into like the mechanical box and everything is told through you know, kind of the, yeah, everything is told through this, like, mechanical music box. It's almost reminiscent to the Book of Life. So, I definitely do understand why Bear Story ended up being the winner. And now let's move on to the most obvious uh, category, the one that everybody knows for a fact that it would win, Inside Out. In fact, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but, there, like, it is so obvious that even when like we see Woody and Buzz, when they announce the winner, you can actually see the lips moving, which means that an animator had to animate Woody and Buzz saying, Inside Out, Pete Doctor, da 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 da. <laughs> but yeah, I can So they must have known ahead of time, is what you're saying. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh well, yeah. Everybody, no, everybody knows for a fact that Inside Out would win, but d did it deserve the win? Absolutely, it was amazing. Uh, close to second place would be Anomalisa, Lisa. considering that it was a very, it was a very. I'm sure James, you, you saw that today, didn't you? No, I I saw that uh, I saw that actually a couple weeks ago over my uh, over my uh, my trip to Jamestown. Um, thanks, to, thank you for sending me the copy, by the way. Um, it's, uh, it, I, I was, I was kind of amazed by it because it, okay, Inside Out is wonderful. It deserved the win. I, I, it, uh, it took, it took me to the moon. Teardrop. Mm -hmm. And, uh. I just got that. Me sad. <laughs> and, um. But Anomalisa is very interesting experimentally because I'm watching it like for the first half or so. I'm sort of saying, okay, this seems like a standard drama about a guy going through uh, a regular midlife uh, crisis. So what's, I'm not, what's I wouldn't the say midlife of... crisis. It's like he's missing his love, you know. Same thing. And so he he's. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just sort of saying, okay, this is such a normal story. What, uh, what about this uh, 
had to be animated? Did they just uh, do it like that because they could? And then I start picking up on little things like, mm -hmm. hey, why are all the characters sounding the same? Why does his daughter, his son, sound like a grown man? <laughs> why? And I'm s slowly picking up on all the surreal aspects, and I realize every other character except for him sounds like the same person. Exactly. No, no, no. The use of... Um... No, because the use of stop motion is like, why is it even animated in the first place? Like, mm -hmm. you don't really get it at first because this could have easily been, um, you know, this could easily could have been live action. But then you realize it's like, oh, wait a minute. Things are made. It's like, oh, that's why. And that's why. It, I remember the moment that I picked up that, like, you know, the big the, how everybody's the same and stuff like that. I was like, oh, I get it now. Oh, my God. It's like, like, dude. No, 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 yeah. It Especially becomes the, insanely more in, surreal as the film goes on. It, no, but, like, it's surreal, and I wouldn't necessarily say surreal, but I would say more, um, like, more symbolic. It becomes more symbolic and, like, metaphorical. Oh, yeah. Like, with the use of, like, uh, the animation and, like, using the same guy to voice everybody else that's not... Crap, who's the main... Like, who's not Lisa... <laughs> The main character's name i already forgot fudge <laughs> i know who you mean but um mm -hmm. yeah it there there is a purpose for that and we won't spoil it for you guys who are listening all five yeah. of you uh no but yeah i would say no 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 but definitely anomalisa is absolutely a close second uh another one then there are the others like i'll, I'll just say it right now sean the sheep it's a good movie. Like, it definitely is a really good movie. Uh, definitely a nice addition to the uh, Ardman collection. Uh, but I will say it's only there because it's a stop motion movie. And ever since the ever since the best animated feature category was invented, every single movie that is stop motion got nominated for an Oscar. And that that's the thing. Okay. Well, next up, we also got when Marnie was there. Um, on one hand, I do feel like it was added because it's more for a sentimental value because technically it is Studio Ghibli's last animated film uh, that they will make before, like, you know, until they know what to do with themselves because they're, they're kind of having, like, this, I don't know, a midlife crisis where they don't know, like, how to build up their studio and stuff like Well, they're trying to figure out what to do, basically. Movie uh, studios just don't have midlife crisis -ish. I don't People know, but have anyway, no, but I, I will say that it def that my God, when I saw when Marnie was there, it definitely is um, one of, if not the most heartfelt uh, Studio Ghibli film that I've seen. Like my James, have you seen it yet? No. No. Okay. No. Well, okay. None of you have. Okay, but I will say this: it's definitely heartfelt. Um, like it's all about the character of Anna and Marnie. And when you see, like, you see their relationship, um, how it blossoms and stuff like that, um, it, it's, it definitely is beautiful. It's definitely one of the most, um, it's, it's definitely the most grounded, like, it's, it's, it's a more down-to-earth Studio Ghibli film. Uh, it, it, in a way, it, it, it almost has the same emotional aspects of, um, of uh, what was it, Grave of the Fireflies, but it's not as, like, heartbreaking it's just it's definitely like it has almost the same amount of feels but you're not going to leave out crying sad and depressed and stuff oh like yeah that. you're not going to need therapy yeah <laughs> uh basically uh yeah. and then finally there was boy and the world and this is the this is probably the one that nobody has seen this is the That's... brazilian animated feature that somehow it made it and honestly the, with the style that it went it's very reminiscent to what normally would be nominated for Best Animated Short because it's very artistic. It doesn't really have much of a story, but it has like kind of this social co this commentary on Brazilian society and stuff like that. Like it starts out as this little tale about a little boy who wants to go find his dad, but then like it kind of grows from there. Like they lose that aspect and like they just went to a completely different thing. But I would say Boy in the World is very Don Hirschfeld like it's like that's like yeah it's basically yeah that's the best way to put it it's very Don Hirschfeld like where the the animation it's rather simplistic but also artistic at the same time 
Like, it does have a meaning. It's also very colorful, I will say. Like, they, they definitely use a lot of colors in there. Uh, there is also, it is also, like I said, very metaphorical, very symbolic. Like, it's trying to, it's trying to make a commentary and stuff like that. But yeah, um, I would say out of the entire bunch, I definitely do get why Boy in the World would be nominated considering of how artistic it is. Uh, but there would, there would be no way it was the winner. But like I said, yes, it's obvious for a fact that Inside Out won, but it should win. That's the thing. It's one of, it's one, it's the best Pixar film ever released since Toy Story 3. It is beautiful. It is, it's just amazing. Creative, original, it's fascinating. It's just all around amazing. It's very, yeah, it, it's very uh, in your head, you know? Yeah. Cerebral. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. It had the feels. And so much feels. So much feels. So much feels talking. Mm-hmm. So there's so actually three categories. One of my feels what? is Swiss Black. Mm. Well, we forgot. Uh, uh, we almost forgot uh, uh, the memoriam. I was going to mention that, James. Don't you worry. I was going to keep it for oh, a yes. special little section. Okay. So, so don't, don't press me for charges. I was going to go through the categories, then go through the MR. So don't go crazy on me like that. Do you need a breathalyzer? Press charges? What? <laughs> don't press. Char- yeah, don't press. Yeah, don't sue me for that. Come on. I know what I'm doing. I'm hosting a podcast here. Leave me alone. I, I know the Immorium, there's a lot of people they did not mention, we'll get to that, but there's oh, three yeah. categories, the big three, well, sort of the big two with the big best actor, which, best actor, I mean, for the longest time, they're like, come on, Leo, come on, Leo, there's even, um, if you guys have, have or have not seen, there was actually a game that was made called Leo's Red Carpet Rampage, <laughs> Yes. <was> made, yes, <laughs> And it was like, it was really cool. You play as Leo, you try to get the Oscar, you run on the red carpet, and then you have to race against all the, all the other <laughs> best actor. It was like, you have to push the buttons, you're like, I gotta get the Oscar. But then, actually, the day of the Oscars, they actually released a super edition where you actually get the Oscar, and the boss fight was actually uh, a massive giant Oscar that turned into a Transformer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I it thought was... it would be the bear from The Revenant. <laughs> No, it would have been amazing if they added it in. But yeah, Leo but there was a Oscar. flipbook animation that I saw. Yeah. Yes, that flipbook animation video that was circling around. Yeah, that was really cool. I mean, of course, you got that bear that was in the audience too, clapping when they were announcing. No, the it, was, it was it was like right in the middle for no reason. Yeah, that bear. <laughs> it was just like came it was nowhere. after a random thing, just... and then suddenly, bear. <laughs> It's like, where, where did that bear come from? Just like, what the heck? That was the best thing. Um, and then you have Best Director, which uh, The yeah. Revenant won, which is the second year row yeah. for Alejandro. So yeah. uh, I would have loved George Miller to won that Oscar, but what the hell? By the way, did we, we didn't skip uh, Best Original Song because there is one more thing I want to add. Like, uh, did we? Besides the fact that okay, yeah, Sam... I don't know if you guys noticed, like, because a lot of people raged at the fact, like, that writing on the wall won. But did you guys like skip the fact that he tr- that Sam Smith tried to soften the blows? Like, oh, I am so I am so proud being the first gay, openly gay man to win the Oscar, and also to represent the LGBT community. I was just there, like, oh, dude, I understand what you're doing, but no, all the no's on that. Because number one, because I saw there was a huge, like, there was a huge argument going on around the web. Like, number one, no, dude, you are not the first gay man to win the Oscar, for God's sakes. And, like, number, and also, I have seen interviews and stuff like that, that Sam Smith is utterly humiliated by everything that happened at the Oscars. Because even he admitted, he even said that it was, like, he said it was the worst day of his life because... Um, like he knew he sung terribly, he knew that his weird bullcrappy James Bond song won over the the like the sta- the one that got multiple standing ovations about standing up uh, like to support 
rape victims and stuff like that. He knew mm-hmm. he was in trouble. And just adding in, like, the being the first openly gay man is like, Ugh. oh, God, no, you don't do that. Yeah, there, yeah, we, I've, I've mentioned uh, Oscar, Oscar rules in the past, and I, I, I still stay, I still say, stay somewhat by the gay rule, even though, uh, even though uh, it's, it's quite apparent that Leonardo DiCaprio blasted that one out of the water. Uh, one of the other one of the other characters that he was up against was somebody who's a transvestite. Yep. Yeah, um, the Danish oh. girl. Yeah, Eddie Redmayne. Yes, and yeah. um, so with um, with the Sam Smith performance, we can also add another rule. Take into account Idina Menzel's uh, performance of Let It Go. How embarrassing that was. The but well, we knew that song that was going to. Oh. But oh, oh, she was off sync like 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 crazy, and then of course there was that introduction. Uh, they, I, uh, I, I think there's got to there's got to be a rule for the worst performed songs song at the Oscar is the one that's going to win. I'm going to throw that out there, and see if, and see if I can attract the stigma. <laughs> Yeah, so... Uh, I mean, after all, we... It's a category that went to its heart out there for a pimp. Come on. <laughs> uh, but with the best picture, the big, big award of the night, it went to Spotlight. Uh, some people were hoping The Revenant was going to win. Some people were hoping something else would win. You were going to say no, Mad Max. Was... You know you wanted to say Mad Max. <laughs> I, did, I didn't want to say it, but I was like thinking, I highly doubt that would have won <laughs> Best Picture. <laughs> 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 uh, George Miller is your friend. Oh man, that would have been. I want to see George Miller get the cord. But yeah, so. I don't even want to know what you said. <laughs> So, those are the awards that were given out. It was, a, it was a good year for the awards. I mean, everybody's set us finally there. And then the Emorium came about. Um, how was the Emorium segment oh dear. montage? You forgot Abe. Yeah, yeah, that's the one thing I noticed. It's like, well, you, managed to, you managed to take the time to mention... The guy who recently passed away that was the writer of uh, the Monsters, Inc. movies and Big Hero 6, but you didn't put in Ape Vagoda? Well, and they also forgot they also forgot Robert Walker. Uh, wait, wait, huh? The, who? Uh, the director of uh, Brother Bear. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, okay. That is true. Oh, it's, not, it's not even listed on here on Wikipedia, but they also left out... Uh, let's see how many more. They left one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, about twelve or thirteen other people besides Abe. They uh let's see, they said Tony Burton from Rocky, uh Rocky Finlay from Othello, George Gaze, Police Academy, uh Goner Hansen, Jeffrey Lewis, Ron Hansen. Moody. Oh, Wait, Fagan, who? Fagan. They left out Fagan. Oh, Fagan. What? From all of them. So. Yeah. Um, um, they they forgot to mention Roddy Piper. I mean, I think they Roddy need to Rod- review their situation a little oh, bit Rod- more. Well, did Roddy uh, Roddy Piper appear in movies? Yeah, they live. Hell comes to Frogtown. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Really so important. he was in really important movie that uh, yeah. Hell comes I mean, to Frogtown. I mean, they live was actually really good. Um, Angus Scrim. Um, oh, let's see. There was the there was man. a couple. Yeah, a couple of directors. Let's see. They said Gene Sachs. Okay, I'm gonna butcher some major names now. Mela Mela de Alavera. Fucking name. Uh, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> that too, brother. <laughs> 
<laughs> so they, they they missed a lot more people than just Abe. So yeah, but yeah, so. Okay, well, I I think it. I, I think of it this way: if they if they had missed somebody like David Bowie, uh, or or or, like... or any of the the other major, really really major leagues, yeah, you seen, right, yeah, you would have yeah, seen major... hell rain from the sky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it was the major, like somebody has a major impact, yeah, somebody's of like small time ones, but Abe Vigoda, man, those he was he's, yeah. So I'm actually surprised that they left some some of those out, um, but they but they managed to sque to squeeze in uh, film critics that uh, oh, that yeah. we've never heard of before. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. Right. And yeah, that's not so. a dis that's not a a diss to film critics because some of us are. Yeah, but, uh, exactly. Um. So what hey, did you think? No, about... Jake, that gives us hope. If we die, maybe we'll appear in the Oscars. <laughs> yes, we ran web shows. <laughs> uh, so what did you think about that live performance of the Beatles song Blackbird? Blackbird? By David Grohl. Me? I didn't know that was a Beatles song. The, they were playing a song and it was a live performance by David Grohl. Yeah. Who played no, Blackbird. it was nice. It was nice. It was definitely nice. So Beatles. that's probably the first... That was probably the first time they did that, actually. They, they, they usually play some music, but this time they actually had a live performance during the mm -hmm. in Morium. Well, usually, so. like, they have, like, it's the singer that's, like, a live performance. Oh, true. But, yeah, but then just... again, like, keep in mind, they also have a live orchestra. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh, that live orchestra, the, the, the playoff music, that was weird because it was, like, some weird mix of themes like they were playing like a star trek theme at one point there was playing some they were playing on um, the ghostbusters theme at one point i was like oh, yeah, they were playing the ghostbusters theme while they're showing the minions it's like something's not right yeah i was like what kind of music are you guys playing it's like what the hell what, actually the what randomest was up with moment, the... Yeah. The, the randomest moment that i discovered sorry james is just um like suddenly out of the blue they were playing the aristocats did anybody yes. else notice Yes. Everybody wants to be a cat. Yeah, they were just playing these random cues. Like, this is it. Oh my god. Yeah, they're just playing these random like little orchestrated cues, and I'm like, why? It it just was like why? they had their film scores uh, set on random and Winamp, and they were just going through there saying, <laughs> "Okay, that we recognize that one. Let's do that." Um, I was I was going to say something. I forgot what it was. What it was. What was it? God damn. Something about Memorial. No, I, I actually wanted to say one more stuff. thing about the Memoriam uh, stuff. What you, what'd you say? Yep, go on. Considering that it's a live performance, I'm also quite I'm also quite pleased by, by one aspect of it. I like it when they don't just show the face of the person, but also the little a little clip of what it is they did they did so you can mm -hmm. Uh, so you can associate in your head what it, what they, uh, who they were, but they they had to sing sync that all on point with the live music because there were moments in there where they where they uh, played film clips with sound, and uh, mm -hmm. you know an actor or an actress would have their famous uh, quote uh, mm -hmm. coming out. I like I like that I like it when they do that. In previous years, they've they've done it so that it's just sort of a slideshow with just pictures of faces. Mm -hmm. And when you do it like that, uh, you're saying, "Oh, this person was a screenwriter, or this person was an actor." What did they do? Unless there's somebody famous, what did they? Exactly, because so, no. Exactly, because uh -huh. the, the names are just like, okay, who's this person? I don't know that person. Yeah, honestly, uh, well, honestly, like they should show more than one thing. Well, they don't like, have they, much they time. They show... But they don't have much time. Well, no, they like, show supposed... several things at once. You know, they have so much space. I don't know about that. I was watching that on a on this screen right here. Okay, no, no, no. What I mean is that okay, no, because on the image, okay, you'll you'll have the person, you'll have their name, 
but like they only show like one little clip on the side, and then they have this open space. It's like, why don't you fill up with the other other times they did stuff? You know, they like, can only get the Alan rights to Rickman, so many movies. Because like with Alan Rickman, like you could put up Alan like they only put up Snape. Like they could have like another like another little thing on the side showing him in Die Hard and another one showing him in Galaxy Quest. What were they gonna show him falling off the off the side of the building in Die Hard? <laughs> Would that have know. been tasteful yeah. at the Oscars? Would that? <laughs> yes, that would have been. <laughs> that would have been. If they just did that clever. He's like, oh. as he fallen, he's like, oh. oh. <laughs> how did he die? <laughs> oh shoot, he died. Oh, is that how he died? No. Um, uh. They did. They did something new for the first time on the Oscars, and they did this ticker on the bottom that said "Thanks for any of the presenter for the winners," which I don't think that really helped because they still talked and thanked everybody, even though the ticker was on the bottom saying "I thank this person, this this person, this this person." I was just like, "Why include that if they're still gonna do the same old shit from every Oscar?" It does feel a bit rude, though. Like, whenever. Like someone tries to talk and stuff like that, and then they put up the Rise of the Valkyrie music to, you know, to get yeah. rid of them. I don't know. I, yeah. I just feel like that's just rude, you know. Yeah, it's true, but that's that's became the Oscar trope, you know. You get cut off towards so it's like, oh, we gotta hurry up, speed up the. the, the, the oh, thank you. I bye. However, I think there's one of them though that tries to own it. I don't know. I, I forgot who was the oh, winner. Oh my god! I forgot that I, person. I own that Rise of the Valkyrie things and like they use it to to their advantage to like to make his speech with the Rise of the Val I think it was no I think it was a director I think it was Alejandro Iñárritu actually he tries to it make his was. speech it probably was it actually I'm thinking yeah, about it now like he, try, he tries to make his speech and like he tries to make it epic so like he works with the Rise of the Val Valkyrie song and like he even um like he even try, like he even put up his his tone up. It's, it's like in a way, way he wanted to say like I'm not done. <laughs> oh, any final thoughts on this year's Oscars? Yes. What the hell were they thinking playing uh, "Fight the Power" during the credits? Oh yeah, that's true. No, I think that's another like Oscar so white thing, because. Uh, because it's uh, straight out of, from straight out of content, I guess. Just not even is it funny. A, is it, is that, it, isn't it an NWA song? No, fight, it's a fight the power. It's that's a, uh, it's a public enemy song. Public enemy. Okay. I, no, it okay, has so nothing to do with straight out of Compton. It, it okay. clashes so, so strong another, with everything. No, it's another jab at freaking. No, it's another thing about. Oh look, Oscar's so white. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it 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 it's like a last minute. Uh, a last minute attempt at trying to make that funny and it just killed whatever whatever mood was left but i want to say i want to say one more thing um leo we love you here at cinema royale we are very proud of you winning the oscar <laughs> uh we uh uh, we we've, we've all seen you in in movies like Titanic. My the first time I remember really really liking you in a in a movie was The Aviator. You start you finally got onto me because you started making movies that I was gonna go see. You're the way of the future. Yes, the way of the future. The way of the future. The way of the future. <laughs> Show me the blueprints. But when and that's what you have to remember when you're receiving an award. But what you're forgetting is that you burn up more carbon credits taking a shit in the bathroom and walking out the door than I do in a whole week. So please, for the love of God, save, save the sermon there. That, that's just me. Well put. <laughs> Um, so yeah, hopefully, uh, next year's Oscars will be something, something to check out next year. Uh, hopefully they get a good host. Actually, uh, they... can, I, can we end off in a better ending mm -hmm. question? Yes. Yes. Considering the, the biggest thing was, 
the Oscar diversity controversy, mm-hmm. do you think that issue will be solved? Um, they did imply that the Oscars have a kind of like a new ruling about that, mm-hmm. about the diversity in the Oscars. Can they, can we introduce a, a best uh, Latino actor <laughs> category next year? <laughs> And a black best black actor back black actress war two. The best white actor goes to the best uh, the best East, Eastern Eurasian actor actor goes to. Oh dear, we'll be here forever. The best no, Polynesian but... actor goes to. Yeah, well, let me just. Well, I I think I'm gonna end that off with just saying this. I believe that they will fit that the Oscars will fix their diversity issue. As much as YouTube will fix their copyright system. Yay! <laughs> Claim! <laughs> this video will be claimed because it has Jaime too. Oh no, they're, they're looking at my uh, Hunt for Red October poster in the background. <laughs> oh, I would be like, wait, copyright claim because of the Red, <laughs> Hunt for Red October. Wait, I didn't put anything visual or audio from that movie? Wait, what? <laughs> Copyright claim it has Square Enix. From what? That poster right there. And that's that the Square Enix is... poster? No, I don't. What? <laughs> Not oh. you, me. <laughs> oh. Him. Look at the background, you dork. <laughs> you also have a Clockwork Orange. Yeah. Where's your yellow submarine poster? It's right here. Okay. Mickey way. Mouse! Mickey oh. Mouse! Mickey Mouse! <laughs> oh god, Disney's gonna be like, you got Mickey Mouse in your video? Twice! Even on the t-shirt! <laughs> no, 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 they're, they're just gonna come in, they're just gonna come in, like, with their clients, they're just me, they're like, mine. Mine, 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 mine. <laughs> uh, this has been Sim Royale, and next time... We're going to have a guest on, Why boy uh, Taylor Wyatt uh, from Toon Grin, uh, a.k.a. also known, formerly known as Cartoon Corner. We're going to talk about Scooby-Doo films. Yay, oh he just released a video about those today, too. Yes, that's... I kind of wanted to do that with him. He, uh, he's been, he viewed all the Scooby-Doo films up to date here. He did a top ten recently, and we're just going to talk about Scooby-Doo's in general, you know... What we like about them, it's good, the bad, the ugly, you know, all that stuff, instead of picking films from the Scooby Doo franchise. So, just be a general discussion about Scooby Doo, because that is a big franchise with movies and television shows worth talking about. Indeed. I can't wait. It'll be quite interesting. Everybody's going to be back. Everybody's going to be there. Devin's going to be there. Morgan's going to be there. So, it's going to be a full crew with a guest. So, a lot of people talking. Yay! Okay. I'm digging it. Okay. I'm dig- Hot diggity dog. Hot diggity dog. Hot diggity dog. Hot diggity dog. This has been Cinema Royale. Thanks for listening, and you keep it classy. Ciao for now. See you later, dudes. Fight the power. 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 We got to fight the power. What's that be? Let me hear you say fight the power. Fight the power. Hashtag Oscar so white. We're trying to be hip and black, cause we Oscars. Aye. Uh, the bears. He's a bear. <laughs>